Hi guys, Joe here, and welcome to Sci-Fi Versus. In this series, I'm going to take different individuals or factions from different universes and match them up against each other and try to come to some sort of conclusion on who would win. Today, we'll be looking at two of the most popular factions from two of the most popular franchises, the Flood from Halo and the CIS from Star Wars. And make sure to stick about to the end, as the winner of this matchup will probably surprise you. So first of all, we're going to have to set up some basic rules. As it's the universe I know much better, we'll have this matchup set in the Star Wars galaxy, and we'll suppose the CIS are the defenders. We'll also suppose that the CIS have made peace with the Republic and have control over all of their resources, droids and people that they did at the height of their power. We'll also suppose that any areas outside of the CIS borders or influence are out of bounds for both factions. And the Flood will start with one infected individual on one average CIS world. But before we begin, only about 10% of you who have come over from my main channel have subscribed here on VF2, so make sure to smash that subscribe button and turn notifications on for more videos like this one. Anyway, back to the matchup. Before we get into the matchup itself, we will need a quick overview and some information about these two factions. Let's start with the Flood, as it's from the Halo universe, which we haven't covered yet on this channel. The Flood are an ancient parasitic species, capable of consuming a whole galaxy's sentient biomass and adding it to its own. The Flood reproduces through infecting sentient organisms and hijacking their nervous systems. But the Flood aren't just your bog standard zombies. Every Flood member is connected through a single consciousness, which becomes progressively more intelligent the more biomass it consumes. By absorbing the memories of its victims, the Flood is capable of eventually becoming an unstoppable force, being both a master tactician and highly infectious. The Flood are also a highly specialised species, meaning the different types of Flood excel at different tasks in combat, making the Flood as a whole highly adaptable. This makes it extremely difficult to combat, as it can constantly change its tactics for whatever the situation. The Flood infection happens in several stages, becoming progressively more dangerous the more biomass it consumes. A Flood infection will usually begin in its most basic form, Flood Spores. However, infection through Flood Spores is slow and not the Flood's preferred method of infection. The next stage of the Flood and the most common vector for transmission was the feared Pod Infector, which is more effective and transmissible. While this form was weaker than other kinds of Flood, huge swarms of them would overwhelm their enemies using their tentacle-like limbs to burrow into the victim and latching onto their spinal cord, before taking over their entire body. The host body would then be transformed into a combat form, and would then serve the collective intelligence of the Flood. Typically, the Flood during its first stage, known as the Fell stage, is just that. Fell and animalistic in nature, while also being extremely aggressive. The overall goal of the Flood at this point is to collect as much biomass as possible. However, once the Flood has reached a critical biomass, the various combat forms will begin to work together, collecting the biomass of sentient beings to form what is known as a proto-gravemind, eventually maturing into a gravemind. This gives the Flood the ability to coordinate their actions at a much higher level, increasing the overall danger that the Flood present. During this coordinated stage, the Flood communicate telepathically with one another, and with the gravemind. The Gravemind will typically create a Flood Hive, which propagates spores into the local atmosphere as well as generating Flood Pure Forms. During this stage, the Flood will typically devour the biomass of the local ecosystem, becoming ever more intelligent and dangerous the more it consumes. While the Flood could absorb biomass such as animals, it much preferred sentient species as the mass of neurons made them much more effective fighters and helped contribute towards the Gravemind. This growing intelligence allows for the Flood to understand and use technology, one of the most deadly aspects of the Flood compared to other zombie hive minds from other sci-fi universes. If the planet that is infected is high-tech and has access to space, the Flood will enter the interplanetary stage. This stage of the Flood is when it truly becomes dangerous, even to high-tech and advanced civilizations. The Forerunners, a civilization in the Halo universe that had access to almost godlike AI and weaponry, were almost wiped out from existence by the Flood due to its ability to use Forerunner technology, including its AI against them. Once the Flood had consumed all the biomass in the galaxy and incorporated all technology into itself, the Flood would enter the transgalactic stage and will exit the galaxy in search of more worlds to devour. 
To determine the Confederacy of Independent Systems capabilities, we must look at the CIS Army, the planetary systems that made it up, as well as other aspects of the Star Wars universe which could help or hinder the Flood to spread around the galaxy. I will mostly be using Legends numbers from around the end of the Clone Wars, as this was the height of their power and canon has little to no information or exact numbers. So the CIS itself was comprised of several thousand star systems, a massive droid army, as well as various powerful megacorporations. When looking at whether the Flood had a chance of beating the CIS, it is important to look at the available biomass the Flood has at its disposal, in particular sentient biomass. Remember, as this is a direct matchup, we will pretend that any areas outside of the CIS or CIS influence cannot be accessed, either by the CIS or the Flood. The Star Wars galaxy, depending on the source and of course if you were going off canon or legends, is said to contain around 100 quadrillion beings spread over 50 million planets, so around 2 billion a planet. However, after I painstakingly looked at the distribution of populations across the Star Wars galaxy and compared them to maps of the CIS, it becomes very clear that the population of the CIS is minuscule compared to that of the Republic and the wider galaxy. According to some estimates, which I tend to agree with, the CIS only made up 1% of the total galactic population, or around 110 trillion individuals. This was due not only to its smaller size of only a few thousand systems, but the sparsely populated nature of the Outer Rim. This is important as the higher the population and the higher the population density, the quicker the Flood can spread. For this reason, the Flood may find it more difficult to spread than it would in far more populated regions such as the Core Worlds. The main advantage the CIS has over the Republic or Empire in defeating the Flood is its droid army. While mostly comprised of B-1 battle droids, the droid army also had more specialist droids such as the B-2 super battle droid and the droid commando. The sheer scale, especially in Legends, of this army is immense. According to some sources and the number used by Wikipedia, the CIS droid army numbered from a quintillion to a few quintillion, as well as millions of warships. Let's take an average number and say there were around 2 quintillion droids at the height of the Clone Wars. So using the number of around 110 trillion sentient beings from earlier, if we split the droid army equally among the CIS population, every man, woman and child could have 20,000 droids personally protecting them. I know it seems absolutely crazy, but that's Star Wars Legends numbers for you. You also have to remember that the majority of the CIS money and control lay in the hands of giant megacorporations, with an endless supply of money. The few planetary systems that made up the CIS were more just an excuse for these mega corporations to leave the Republic so they didn't have to pay tax. So now we have outlined both factions, let's get to the fun part, the matchup. Although the sparsely populated nature of the CIS may slow down the transmission of the Flood, it may also prevent the CIS from noticing the outbreak. As the CIS droids are not known for their brilliant programming, it could be quite a while before any of the higher ups realise anything is wrong. If the Flood is able to take control of a town on a sparsely populated world, it could quickly become a massive problem for the Confederacy. Faster than light travel is extremely common and fast in the Star Wars universe. At this stage, the Flood could be semi-intelligent and coordinated, and would most likely be able to use any starship in that town to spread to other systems. However, while the Flood may have some early gains and may even be able to consume a planet or two, I believe that if the CIS utilised the full force of its army, then the Flood would have almost no chance of besting the CIS. Even if every single biological being with the CIS was turned into a Flood, the CIS would still have its droid army, which as seen in Rebels was still able to independently operate without biological beings. Therefore, the CIS droid army would outnumber the Flood 20,000 to 1. On top of this, the CIS had almost no qualms about destroying population centres and killing civilians, and it is very likely that any planet with a high number of Flood would simply have been glassed from space, with the droid army sent in after to destroy any remaining Flood. The only way I believe the Flood would have any chance of beating the CIS is through the use of the Master Switch used in the Revenge of the Sith to turn off the droid army. However, it is likely the CIS would either destroy the Master Switch or would heavily guard it to prevent it from falling into the Flood's hands. When discussing this matchup with some of you guys, some propose that the Flood may be able to turn the CIS droid army against the Confederacy using the Logic Plague, basically the Flood's ability to take over and corrupt AI. It was said that at the end of the Forerunner Flood War, when the Flood were at the height of their power and had absorbed countless worlds, the Logic Plague could be transmitted from any Flood form to the AI. 
However, without the immense power afforded by countless planets worth of biomass, corruption of AI can only happen when there is direct communication between the grave mind and the AI. Moreover, the Flood had absorbed extremely advanced technology by the end of the Forerunner Flood War, which would have helped improve this ability, something the Flood would be unable to do within the Star Wars universe. As the CIS is comprised of quintillions of different AI, I think the Flood would have a hard time turning a significant number of them. Maybe if the droids had a central processing unit like they did at the Battle of Naboo, then the Flood would have more of a chance. But in the CIS droids from during the Clone Wars, it would be a much more difficult task to corrupt large numbers of them. I think in a direct matchup between the CIS and the Flood, I would wager that the CIS would win 9.5 times out of 10. Although the Flood would be able to propagate to many planets, using Star Wars' relatively quick and abundant faster than light travel. The small number of sparsely populated planets that comprise the CIS would mean that the Flood would struggle to propagate quickly enough. The number of droids outnumbered the CIS biological population 20,000 to 1, an almost impossible numerical advantage. And that's assuming the Flood somehow consumed all biological life within the CIS. And even if the droid numbers are greatly exaggerated, and the number of droids is a hundred times less, this is still a 200 to 1 advantage. I believe that if the CIS responded quickly, they would be able to use their massive army to fully lock down the small number of infected planets. In a worst case scenario, I believe the CIS would have no problem with glassing a planet in order to destroy any flood that may be residing there, a drastic measure that would see many die. I also believe the CIS would resort to suicide tactics if needed, and would likely kamikaze star destroyers into planets or suns if they feared it would fall into the hands of the Flood. So overall, while the CIS would likely see many of their inhabitants die, the Flood would struggle to gain enough biomass to effectively combat the enormous droid army. Anyway, that's simply my opinion. Who do you guys think would win, and do you think I have missed a crucial detail which could have changed the outcome of this matchup? It would also be great if you could comment down below other faction verses for me to do in the future. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like for the algorithm, and consider checking out this faction versus where I pit the Empire against a Dyson Sphere, otherwise known as a Kardashev II Civilization.